Hi. Hi there. Um, well, um, thanks for joining Stephanie. And um, why don't you give a few thoughts on the game, if you don't mind, and then we'll take questions. Um, I was excited about how the team just stuck together through a little, little bit of adversity in the beginning. Um, you know, we never hung our heads down. We just kept playing the whole game and, you know, kept, you know, basketball is a game of ups and downs and we know that. So we just kept playing hard and stuck together throughout some adversity. So I was proud of that. Stephanie, uh, congratulations on the win. And uh, I guess yesterday your floor game was really good, but you di didn't quite find your shot. It seems like everything came together today for you. Uh, can you talk about that progression from yesterday to today? Um, I think it was just, um, you know, getting back into the swing of game action. Um, really just, you know, working my way back into game, real game situations. And, you know, they just put me in good spots on the floor to score. My teammates found me. So I was just, you know, glad to be in a good position. I believe that's the most points you've scored since you had like 22 at Miami two years ago. And that's the first double-double since that game. You remember that game? Yeah, vaguely, vaguely. <laughs> but uh, what 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 turned the game around? Obviously, the first quarter, nothing seemed to go right. What, what turned things around for the team? Um, I think everyone really just bought into bringing all the energy they had right here, right now, because I think what we saw, what we were doing wasn't working. So everyone just bought into, you know, giving it their all, bringing energy on the defensive end. And I think that's what kind of sparked our offense, too. You think you, think you were not – doing the same job defensively as you did yesterday in the first quarter? Um, I think I think we um, were a little bit flat to start. Um, you know, it's, it was back to back. So, you know, we didn't have as much prep time, but um, I think that's no excuse for, you know, bringing out energy from the jump. And I think we kind of hit that switch and started bringing energy on the defensive end, which triggered the offense too. Are you 100% now? I know you missed the opener with an injury. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm all 100% ready to play. Uh, What's the, what's the difference in the vibe on this team than the vibe that you saw two seasons ago in the program? Um, I mean, I don't I don't want to compare teams, but this team definitely is you know bought in one hundred percent together. Um, you know, when when one person's down, you know, we're picking that person up and you know bringing them on board. So everyone's just kind of bringing each other along and all bought in. So it's exciting and something I'm proud to be a part of. Have you ever had a UNC team you've played with with this much depth and speed and length? I've never played on a team with this much depth. I mean, it's it's one through 12. You know, everyone can come in and contribute something, which is so exciting for this team. Um, you know, one through 12 can come in and contribute something. So that's something that you don't, well, that I haven't played with much. So it's exciting to be a part of this. And what about the the, the approach to, to – um, tempo and everything that that's kind of the same as two years ago what, what are the differences in the kind of game that Carolina plays this year than your first time with the program um we played fast but um I think I think now we're playing fast and in control you know um we're we're finding everyone for good looks for them we're pushing the floor but we're not trying to you know rush so I think there's a difference in like how we're playing fast but not rushing so and what about the this uh Skylar Kerr, number 21, she scores 22 in the first quarter and then she has six the rest of the way. Was there something special that you all figured out on her after um, that? I think that just is attributed to like us buying in on the defensive end. You know, we just kind of came together as a team and said, okay, we're not anymore. We're picking up the energy right here, right now. And everyone was just able to like buy into that and brought energy. So. You know, my teammates just picked everyone up and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get stops. And, you know, we all bought in. So it was just great energy. Are you faster than you were uh, your first time in Chapel Hill? I see the speed um, uh, on transition, uh, I, and it's pretty impressive. I, I, I feel like it. I, my body feels really good. I feel like I've been just working to get my legs back strong, and I feel I feel really good, explosive, and faster I do. And if you could talk about it, what was your injury last year, and what was your injury preseason? Um, so a slight, um, removal of a cyst in my knee. So I got that out. That was all taken care of. And that was, went fine. I was, you know, back a hundred percent. And then I just had a quick ankle sprain, like a few days before the game. So it just swelled up a little bit, but. That was your right knee at USC? Yeah. yeah. And your left ankle? At, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jeremiah, I appreciate you... it. 
Do you have anything that you need to get? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, um, congratulations again on the win. Um, so coming off the bench, you were able to make plays on both ends of the court, provide spark offensively, and actually, you know, make some plays um, on the defensive end, especially early on in that first half. So um, you talked about at the very beginning coming together uh, as a team despite going down, but what was your mindset individually, um, you know, in the first quarter when you guys uh, initially fell into that hole? Um, I think something I pride myself in personally is just bringing energy in any way I can and just bringing everybody along with me. So um, I just try to bring energy on offense, defense, talk to my teammates and just get energy going. So. All right. Uh, next question I have for you. So you definitely filled up the stat sheet, led the team tonight in or to this afternoon in points, rebounds, assists and steals. Um, so I wanted to ask you if you could uh, describe a little bit the rhythm that you were able to find and how everything was just able to uh, um, just kind of click for you on both ends of the court? Um, I think when I, you know, was able to get in, um, my teammates just found me in good positions. Um, you know, whenever I was open, my teammates found me. You know, my first shot of the game, I think, was a three coming off one of our um, sets. And, you know, they, they find me. So, you know, I think my teammates for, like, being able to get me in the rhythm of the game and bring them together, too. So. All right, great. And then the last question that I have for you. So you have four steals yesterday and you have five today. So can you describe... Um, not just the mindset that you have defensively, but also your ability to not just be uh, disruptive, but to also make plays and force turnovers and, you know, kind of get things going um, in transition on the other end. Um, I'm just, I'm glad to be finally, um, you know, playing in the right spots on defense. It's something I worked with with my <laughs> coaches a lot in the off season. So like, I'm just, you know, try to be in the right positions. And when you're in the right positions, you're um, in a good place to get those steals. So. I'm just and try to be active as I can and bring as much energy as I can. And I think when you're bringing energy and being active, that just kind of comes with it. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> Hello. All right. Hi, Alyssa. Um, so we have uh, freshman Alyssa Usby here, and if you guys have any qu well, actually, Alyssa, how about you give us a few, um, just quick, your thoughts on the game, and then, um, and then we'll have some questions. Perfect. So Seth kind of touched on it. We started off kind of flat, but then um, working together and trusting each other, we were able to pick up our pace on the offensive end as well as picking up our energy on the defensive end, and that's really what turned that game around from being down in the first quarter. And double-double uh, today. Uh, did you have many double-doubles in high school? Yeah, a couple. <laughs> did, did that surprise you? I mean, you, you pull, pulling down that many rebounds, uh, is that something that you've done? I mean, guard a guard with 11 rebounds, that's not that common. Yeah, so I played the five in high school. So I'm used to, you know, being roughed up a little bit underneath the glass. And although like the college play is obviously a lot different than high school for me, but um, so it's just been a little bit of an adjustment, but uh, same motivation, same drive to go grab ball. And you seem to have a lot of uh, an array of moves to the basket and uh, different ways to score. Uh, did, you, did you have that variety as a post player in high school or has that just been developed this season? Yeah, so in high school, I played all five spots, whatever my coach needed me and whatever was needed at the time. So that allowed me to develop a variety of skills to be able to score at all three levels. And here, our coaching staff really pushed me out of my comfort zone to get better at like the skills that work well in our offense. So driving the ball and post-ups for me, so. What, what were the coaches telling you all when things weren't going so well and there was a timeout in the first quarter? Yeah, so they're telling us we need to stick together and um, like we know our scout, we just have to follow through and um, trust each other and put forth that effort that was needed to pull away. I mean, did, did that stun you all that, that you were in 21 point hole that early? Yeah, I think we were shocked, but I, I knew we were, we were all calm. We, we understood that we were, gonna, we were in that adversity and we realized that, and then we took action to get out of it instead of sulking and not being able to um, turn that around. How did you slow Curran down after that 22 point first quarter? Yeah, so that was just applying more ball pressure. 
so the ball couldn't move as quick. So then our um, the girl who was on number twenty one could get up on her a lot a lot easier and contest her shots. Who, who was guarding her mostly in the second quarter? Uh, second quarter, I believe I was. You were okay. So yeah. you did you did that? I thought so, but you you, yeah. so you did that job. Yeah. So, so you you would get a lot of the credit for her slowing down, and then also she picked up a couple of fouls. Did she pick up those couple of fouls with you guarding her? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I can't remember specifics. But um, it really took the team effort to buy in because with although we had a couple of different girls guarding 21, which really contributed to slowing her down. So it was really a team effort to get her out of her rhythm. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you. All right, yeah, um, I also had just a couple of questions. So the second unit really as a whole, of course, you being a huge part of it, um, came in and was, uh, you know, scored 12 of the uh, 14 points in that first quarter. So I wanted to ask from your perspective, how important do you think it was um, for you all to be able to come in and uh, provide that uh, momentum uh, beyond that first quarter? Yeah, so as, as being a part of that second group, we noticed what was lacking in that moment. So we brought forth like the, the effort and just the aggressiveness to kind of bring us back. And it really took all of us off the bench to kind of pick up, pick up the girls that were in the first group. And then eventually they came back in and they contributed just as well as we did. Oh uh, yeah. And then the next question I have for you. So obviously we already talked about um, the double double. So you and Stephanie actually did have double doubles tonight and the final rebounding margin ended up being uh, 53 28 in favor of you all. So I wanted to ask you, um, what did you feel like was the, uh, the key reason you are, you all were so dominant on the boards? Yeah, I think what you said, dominance is a big factor and that's something we all pride ourselves on. So going after the ball and not being passive. So just putting our foot down and saying, we're going to go grab the ball and we're going to push it up the floor. So that really contributed to how many rebounds we were able to grab tonight. Oh yeah, that's all I have for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Hey, Jeremiah, I can get you a paper copy of the box score, or if you want to check the, the stats weren't updating at the very end, but they're final up there now. Hi, Coach Banghart. Hi, right, guys. Good. Um, why don't you give us, please, a few thoughts on the game and the... Sure. Yeah, on the game? Yeah, I mean, boy, thanks. Thanks. yeah, thank God for experience, you know, I... We've got a lot of we got a lot of pieces, but you know, in some games, what you need is those that have been there before. And uh, hats off to Janelle and and to um, uh, Watts and obviously to Petra, who um, sort of flexed their muscle when we needed it. Also, um, you know, the bench, 57 of 57 points for us, 18 for them. You know, I felt like we, uh, you know, they did a good job playing through our roster. Um, but you know, it's a really tough game for a one-day scout. I mean, a no-day scout. I'm sorry, we knew that it's a five-out spread offense. There's a very few teams you want to play in a one-day scout. Florida Gulf Coast, which is where this coach came from, here, Princeton, Villanova, Drexel. There are very few you don't want to play. But that we wanted to give these guys as much as we this this team as much as we could. Um, after the first quarter, the game is is in our you know we we, we took care of business. But that first quarter, man, it it, it hit us. It rocked us. We're, we're, so you were stunned to be in a 21 point hole, I'm guessing. I, I mean, I was just talking to these guys in the back. I, I didn't realize it was quite that bad. Um, I, I realized that that was, you know, that there's difference between guarding the arc as well as, you know, t instead of taking away perimeter shots and we needed to, to, as I told them, it was an issue of six inches. I mean, you just got to go six inches. And, and if you put more, six more inches into your, into your hand contest, you know, we'll be all right. Um, and then offensively, I think it's easy to look at that and say, boy, you only score, you know, you give up 32 points. That's terrible. Uh, scoring 14 for this team isn't good either. So offensively, we were settling, and defensively, we were um, uh, we were a bit too passive. And uh, they also shot really well. I mean, let's go. I mean, that that's pretty rare. You're going to shoot that well for for, for a full game. And the, the current with the 22 points in the first quarter, and she she went six points after that. Uh, what went differently? I know Alyssa was on her a little bit. Uh, what 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 changed there? Well, we first of all we put length on her. So uh, with uh, with Young, Ariel Young, and, and um, Watts, and uh, Todd Williams, and Usby, those are four really long wings. So we just we, we sort of said, hey, we're not going to switch everything. We're going to actually keep length on, on Curran, uh, force her to take 12 more inches away from the arc. And then we also switched up our defenses a little bit. Um, and then she started to miss some shots. So yeah, mostly length was what we, we, we shifted over to length on her. And 
I was looking at you during the timeouts or in the first quarter and didn't look like you were yelling, didn't look like you were animated. What was your approach? And, uh, uh, they were telling me that it, it, you all were calm throughout that period. Uh, what was your approach to and what did you tell them? Yeah, I mean, I think if things don't go well, it's so easy to, to start yelling at them. But that, that that's sort of then it's us then then it's them versus me. Right. And that's not what we want. Right. We're all in this together. So the fact that we were down by what you said, 21 at the half or whatever, or the end of the first quarter, I was down by 21, too. Right. And so all I know is to is to make this a team game. And, and that's what we did is we sort of said, all right, we all got to get a little bit better. I got to make some adjustments, put length on on current. You guys got to give us a, another 12 inches towards the ball. Um, but um you know, and also I, I also talked about the offensive end, not settling. So, yeah, it doesn't help to yell. It helps to teach. And that's what I'm always going to do. Stephanie Watts, obviously she had a good floor game yesterday, but didn't find her shot. But it seemed like she put everything together uh, today. Uh, what, how how yeah. did she do that today? Yeah, Watts is, you know, she's still coming back from, you know, she had an ankle sprain, as, as she alluded to. And so she's has been limited a little bit and um, she hasn't played college basketball in, in a year and a half. So, you know, she's just going to take some time to get into the rhythm of the game. Um, but what she does is she, she really loves this team and, and she, she wants to contribute in any way that she can. She plays with great energy. She's a high risk, high reward player um, at, with great speed. Um, and her stat line is, is one of the better stat lines I've seen um, in a game where we needed her. And obviously when she runs in with Alyssa those, uh, as our second group, that's a lot of speed, but you know, she's also, an, uh, she's a sixth year kid, you know, and um, so she's been in environments like that. She's been in the ups and downs of a, of a game where things aren't going your way. Um, our young guys haven't. So we needed our older guys to play like older guys today, and they did. So, so her leadership from her and, and uh, maybe Janelle helped your team be resilient 100%. today? Yeah, it was a game of uh, you needed your experience, guys. And, and the, you know, if you're going to be down at half, um, that could make younger guys panic a little bit because they haven't been in that environment. They haven't they hadn't been losing. They never lost in the first quarter. They hadn't lost by halftime. Um, and so, yeah, our older guys really, um, you know, they they sort of took the bull by the horn. And thank God. But, but last season without the depth, could you have pulled off what you pulled off today? Probably not. I, I don't know. You know, we did, we weren't in the game, but um, it's a very different team because we have more length to deal with a place like Curran. We have more depth, so more people to go to. Um, and I think we're more cohesive. So um, those are all things that help in, in a game like this. Thank you and congratulations. I appreciate you. Thanks. All right. Uh, congratulations, coach. Um, just a couple of uh, questions from me. So, of course, you know, things like this don't really show up as much in the bot score, but I know Ariel Young was, you know, very, so it's just on the defense end of the court. I know um, a lot of the, you know, bench scoring is what more of the, uh, I guess, tail of this game was. But can you yeah. just speak to that? Um, yeah, can you just speak to that um, side of the ball and of you know, what that intensity was like specifically from, from Young? Yeah, Ariel's a kid you root for. You know, she was a mid-year transfer, so she didn't play last, last, semester, last year. First semester, she was still at Michigan. Second semester, she was here, so she was practicing, but she obviously was in residence, so she wasn't playing. And then she couldn't play in the first semester um, here either. So thankfully, the first semester was moved up. Um, but so, you know, she's just a kid you root for. She hasn't played college basketball in a year and a half. And um, she practices. She's the first one to practice every day and the last one to leave. Um, and she's a coach's kid, so she understands um, the, the importance of preparation and, um, you know, her energy, her ability to defend, her competitiveness was a, was a huge part of this win. Cool. Yeah. And um, you talked about, um, you know, wanting to teach when the team was down and not necessarily uh, um, just Gil. And so I wanted to ask you after now the team certainly wasn't um, shy shooting the ball. Um, shots just weren't going in initially. But um, can you talk a little bit, uh, expound a little bit more, I guess, on like the overall yeah. message um, about, you know, continuing to be aggressive with the shot uh, despite yeah. the shots not falling? Sure. Yeah, it's not always roses. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to come across like I'm always just telling them things are all right. Right. But when you're down in the first quarter of a four quarter game, things are all right. You just have to make some adjustments. And I thought the offensive end, they didn't take bad shots in the first half, but they settled. So if you're not, um, the, the, the beauty of offense is you, you determine the shot you take. So um, sure, a 15 foot jump shot or a three point shot, it's a great shot. If it goes in, if it doesn't, we should look at different shots. So I just challenge them to understand their shot selection. You wanna make them guard you. The way that high point plays offense is fatiguing well, for both teams, but especially for them at the pace that they cut at and, and the level of concentration that that five out requires. And so when you don't make them defend, they have like eight seconds to get to rest, right? And we just don't wanna do that. So, you know, as much as it's easy to talk about the defensive end, I thought we made a lot of offensive adjustments that allowed us to um, generate much better looks that were, were more secure. Um, yeah, but no, I wasn't, at halftime, I wasn't pleased. Um, it wasn't like I, 
you know, some they were great. I just was making sure that they knew that there were tactical errors that we were making um, with this guy. With these guys, it's not a lack of effort. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Uh, and just the last question I have for you. So you talked a lot about uh, the experience, the overall experience that the team had that allowed you to reel it back in. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I guess specifically um, the second unit um, and how they were able to provide a lot of the scoring. Um, I just wanted to ask you really quickly, what do you think um, outside of just the fact that, you know, maybe they've been in the position before, what yeah. um, what in this game specifically do you think kind of turned it around and allowed, um, yeah, and just allowed the offense to be a little bit more uh, potent and organized as the game moves forward? Yeah, the sec that second group, it's nice to have a sixth-year kid who's had a lot of uh, – who has scored a lot of points off your bench, right? But also, if you look at her, uh, Watts and Alyssa and, and, and Young and um, Anya, those are kids also that are really rugged. They're competitive, they're long, they're fast. Um, and so they're also impact, they, they, they provide impact. And so um, not only did they did they shoot well or score well, but they just, they provided an impact, which is what you have to do off the bench. Um, and so yeah, I think it was a combination of both of those things. Experience is super helpful, but also so is uh, coming in with impact. You get a chance to see what's the problem and make an immediate change where the starters have to sort of go in blind. So that's part of what we do is pick our starters and who off the bench based on who can be best in those different situations. So, yeah, it was, it was obviously over the course of the three games, I think everybody had their, their moment to really be helpful to the team. I just had one more quick question. Um, Malou, four minutes. And uh, Alexandra, one minute was, was any injury issues? No, 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 Lou. We're, I don't. I can't say this very often. I'm knocking right now, but right now we are 12 deep. So <laughs> this is not one of those years where that's pretty common. But um, you know, the the that was a team where you're not going to use a lot of bigs because they're so small. And um, you know, if you're not shooting well from three, they can just pack it in. So we had to go small um, to take advantages off the dribble. So they're both close players, right? So their positional group wasn't needed as much as other games, and, and we'll need them in other games differently. And Janelle was kind of holding her left arm when she came out, but she came back, so she's okay? Yeah, when, you're, when you've when you played this game for four years, you're, you're, you just don't walk into games feeling great. It's just not a thing. Just like when you're 42 and you're a head coach, you don't walk in feeling great and rested, right? So, you know, she's going to have to battle through, um, battle through some nicks and bruises, like I'm going to have to battle through being a, a mom of young kids, right? It's just uh, – <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hey, Dana, could you send me the, I, I forgot to hit record. Could you send me the video? Uh, yes, it'll be a giant, giant file, but um, 